Namaste everyone. Welcome, welcome. This is a special live where we're gonna pull some cards and talk about the 8-8 portal upcoming. Okay, so I'm gonna wait, see if we have some people that want to participate to this live. So 8-8 portal, you know, very much involved with one of the four royal stars of astrology, the brightest star in the Leo constellation, Regulus. So some of you, if you don't know, that's something that I'm going to be posting as a tutorial in my stories after this live, um, how to find Regulus in your chart. <laughs> and Regulus is going to give us insights about our own leadership. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Sinead. Welcome, everyone. So happy to see some of you. Some of you, I don't know you, but thank you for joining. Uh, the teachings of Regulus are about sovereignty, how to lead with our hearts in alignment with our soul's purpose. And the way you're going to see this is it's pretty much where you have your Leo energy. Wow. <laughs> where does that come from, Audrey? Wow. <laughs> Now, Regulus, according to if you're using uh, Western astrology or Vedic astrology, is going to be a little bit different in terms of its placement. Do not fear. Here on this channel, we take it all into account, okay? So I'm going to show you the cards. As far as the reality of Regulus, the expression of what we might be experiencing with this type of leadership on earth okay so those degrees of leo if you're on the physical layer this is very much about how you're going to stand your ground how you're going to also bridge the gap between where you stand and where you want to go without letting other people's vibration influence you and that's the, those degrees are very much involved like you know uh halfway with another energy here with the Eight of Pentacles, which is about craftsmanship. It's about your self-mastery. So through the Regulus energy, where you have it in your chart, this is going to shine a certain energy in certain topics. Okay, some of you, you might have it merge with another planet. You might have it on certain points of your chart. Okay, mine is very close to my descending line. So that means a lot of my one-on-one -on -one interaction, I'm going to have to bring this energy, okay? So now that's like on the physical layer and the work that Regulus is asking of us. Into the intellectual field, that means that what, what do you need to think? Like where do you have to set the dial of your mind to be able to achieve this type of self-mastery, to bridge the gap between where you are, where you want to be, and maintaining the frequency and the vision of your desires, okay? Wow. Mentally, we see that we have to make sure that the conflict that we see on the outside, we take the responsibility and accountability for having a certain um, frequency match to it inside of us. It's like if your reality is showing you a certain dynamic, there's probably something that is attracting it to, okay, to you, okay? And it's also, again, on the verge of, you know, like um, where Regulus is, is just on the cusp of certain constellation. And you have the Four of Cups here, which is a card that shows that there is certain things that have manifested but we're not so happy about it. And we have to transcend the dissatisfaction in order for the universe to show us some of the blessings. So it's almost like through facing your own. So mentally, you have to understand what you're witnessing and what you put your focus on. If you're setting the tone to, I am emotionally dissatisfied with this, but you stay with this and you stew in it, instead of saying, oh, I am grateful for witnessing something that doesn't bring me satisfaction. And then look at what you can do 
in order to bring satisfaction. This is going to help you manifest not only self-mastery, but maintaining your vibration in the face of the conflict in and out that you might face. And the greatest conflict, and this is what I love about also Leo's energy, in the distortion, we see Leo as something that is more outward, okay, that leads over others or wants to have that self, uh, self-center or stage uh, energy. But really, what you see on the outward is a reflection of the inside world. So there's just such great teachings from Leo season, but also this portal, how to maintain our sovereignty, how to maintain our leadership. And this energy, again, is going to manifest in different placement of um, your chart according to the houses. Sorry, I don't know why the comments just not showed up. So I see we have some uh, rising uh, Leo. So if you have rising Leo, that's going to be interesting because that means that this is the energy that you need to embody in this lifetime. By the way, just a FYI, I will have, and I do have for until the end of this portal. So August 22nd, a special promotion. If you want to have some insights about your own connection to Regulus, if you feel called to activate this point, this is a royal star, okay? <laughs> we'll talk about the other ones when they come along, okay? So what I'm going to be doing, try to know where your regular, so that means your, I would say, where is your Leo energy in your chart? You don't need to have planets there. Understand that you have all 12 zodiac signs active in your chart, but some that are more predominant, okay? But you might just have a house, for a certain sign. So know where Leo shines for you because this is where you're going to have this energy that you need to embody and maintain. North Node Leo. Oh, this is going to be cool. But now you say North Node Leo, that's great. Where is your North Node? You need to know in what aspect of your life this is going to shine, okay? So we're going to pull some cards for each house, okay? I'm going to channel a little bit of messages because for this embodiment, we need to release certain things that we're doing, that we're repeating in order to let that higher version to come through, okay? So I have picked the Magical Times Empowerment cards and I'm going to give you also a frequency that is associated with the house because each house has also a specific zodiac associated to it and that means a specific organ mm-hmm. okay so we'll talk about this if some of you you can stay the whole live just know that i will be saving this and posting it on my instagram as well as my youtube okay so Let's get rolling for the ones that have Regulus energy, Leo's energy in their first house. You're going to want to sit yourself with me (laughs) and see what we have. (laughs) Okay, card is clear. So what do we need to know for people that have, so probably a rising in uh, Leo or Regulus. Ooh, this is interesting. The strength card came, but I pulled it reversed. Let's see what it says. You have courage. You can endure. Find your center and spiral into your power. Okay. So thank you so much. I'm glad some of you are resonating with this energy. It's such an important portal. portal. (laughs) Okay. Is Regulus means sun. No, Regulus is a star. Is the brightest star in the constellation of Leo. I will put a tutorial in my story if some of you then you want to look at it as far as where do you find it. But just so you know, where you have your Leo's energy is going to help you. Now, here we're seeing there's something about find your center and spiral into your power. Now, I pull this in the reverse. So my advice for the ones that are connected to Regulus in the first house, okay, 
is to watch exactly what we said. Watch how you can ground your energy in your surrounding. Can you maintain, so that means as an example, can you maintain your commitment? So let's say in the morning you set up yourself for a to-do list. And then at the end of the day, you realize that you didn't do half of it because you let other people's priority come first. And of course, when we're parents, we have jobs and things like this. We have to make sure that, you know, we can maintain this alignment. But at the same time here, it's trying to show you, it's like, are you trying to, it's like, it's, are you not saying no because you don't want to create ripple or rough people's feather? Or are you just kind of aligning because you know it's going to serve you? It's almost like trying to understand that you will find more power in your reality, in your life, if you have the courage to stand in your own truth. And that means saying no when you mean no, and saying yes when you feel fully aligned with that decision. Because otherwise, you're going to attract a lot of more dissatisfaction. Okay, those cards. Dissatisfaction, which creates your inner conflict, which in turn creates conflict with others. And for some reason, it's like it even will show up in your work. Okay, so some of you, if you feel like, Everything outside of you is a conflict, okay? There's great teaching through this portal of leadership. And the first advice is to actually make sure that we're able to stand true in our power and not let the world spinning around, spinning us, <laughs> okay? If you want to work with a frequency to help you, the first house is an Aries house. The organ connected to the first house is the long meridian. And that means, for example, breathing is going to be great for you to stand in your power. Any type of breath work. Okay, so some of you, that could be something, it's like when you have to answer in the face of conflict, take a breath and really ponder. Do I want to say yes or do I want to say no? <laughs> some, like the energy that I felt, some of you, you really want to say no. Please say no when you mean no. It's not helping you when you say yes when you mean no, okay? Just find a compromise. If it's a, a work situation, maybe it's just like, yes, I will get to it when I'm done with this. Make sure that, like, for example, that's something that I've learned. And I have some, some Leo placement, okay, you guys is that I'm very efficient in my work, any aspect of any jobs I've ever had, because I know how to do it in an order that really works with my flow. And usually I, I, I kind of like to micromanage myself or attract positions that allow me to meet bosses that don't want to manage me, they just trust me, okay? Because they can see it's an energy embodiment. Okay. Oh, you're so welcome. Oh, thank you, everyone. You have Mars in Leo. Oh, well, that's, that's going to be... So if you have a planet in a CERN uh, in Leo, you're going to uh, really benefit from hearing this. You want to look at the house where you have this. Okay, so that was house number one. I feel I don't want to shuffle. The cards are in order, I'm hearing. Okay, so if you have regular, so Leo's energy... In the second house, let's see what we have. Ooh, humor. humor. Oh, and there you go. <laughs> Some of you just, okay, second house, humor, which is very interesting because it says, laugh at yourself, lighten your heart, and let nothing steal your happiness. That's something that I was just talking to at work, someone yesterday, I was saying like in the most stressful situation, I have to laugh. This is how I diffuse tension. So some of you, maybe there's a certain self-mastery about 
learning how to bring humor to a situation. I know that personally, I like, you know, creating reels that are funny about the ascension, spiritual journey, uh, bringing a childlike attitude. So this is something that is going to help, especially if you have Leo's energy in the second house, especially if you know where uh, Regulus is, okay? Now, this house is associated with Taurus. If you want to listen to a frequency that supports you, you have to connect to the large intestine. I love it because large intestine is where we dump, right? We dump that shit. <laughs> so some of you, if you, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm joking, <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> if you have Regulus, okay, that is in the second house, go and listen to the large intestine and just watch how much you store the shit you have to put up with people, okay? Because, for, and for example, for some of you, if you're constipated, just so you know, <laughs> it's time to dump it out. And that, that shows a little bit like bringing humor. Is, 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 it's really the teaching of Taurus. Is that, uh, you know, there's a steadfastness energy to Taurus because it kind of embodies an energy that is very sure of. Okay, but that means that you don't want to let people dump on you. Okay, you want to make sure that whatever they is projected, you kind of let it be released. Okay, again, some of you, if you do not know where Regulus is, I will have a tutorial. This is in the constellation of Leo. Okay, all right. So second house, bring some humor if you have Regulus. That's going to help you with this portal. Okay. Remember, we're talking about the portal uh, right now. First house, make sure that you ground yourself. You don't let your surrounding spiral you or distract you from your self mastery, where you want to go in life, your dreams, your goals. Second house, you want to bring humor into other people's conflict, the shit they bring. Okay. <laughs> and just, just try to spin it, spin it with humor. I said they were on top of each other, so I'm not... It's third house. Let's see what we have. Ooh, partnership. I pulled it in the reverse. Learn to grow with others. Overcome obstacles by working together. Touch each other's hearts while life lasts. Okay? So, I pulled it in reverse. This is interesting because I feel that this is a reminder... For the ones that have Leo slash Regulus in the third house, to make sure that your highest partnership is with your higher self, is with source. When you work in astrology with esoteric astrology, uh, we're working with the house system more to embody your higher self. And that's the teaching of the third house, is how you communicate with your higher self. You might see how your relationships you know, manifest could be a reflection of your own relationship to the higher part of you. Are you able to be patient? I'm hearing. <laughs> Why am I laughing? <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> patience. I don't know who that is, but some of you need to hear that. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Uh, third house, Gemini, uh, Gemini, <laughs> Gemini cricket, you know, um, Pinocchio. <laughs> okay. All right. Gemini cricket. Uh, it's for, for me, it's always a symbol of, you know, my little higher self on my shoulder trying to talk to me. Okay. So, <laughs> so I don't know for some of you just pay attention to that inner voice. If you want to create more space for hearing that inner voice, Gemini, let's say it right now, Gemini is connected to your stomach, Meridian, okay? <laughs> Thank you. So, so here it's interesting because the stomach is, is a second brain. It knows, okay? And that means that you want to create more space with that energy center from your stomach so you have more ease with receiving your gut feelings, okay? And not that we don't have this 
intuitively, but we've been, you know, wired by society, by our parents, by what we should do and what we shouldn't be doing. Like, nah, nah, nah. We have a set of rules, okay, over us that is ruling over us. And with Regulus and with this type of portal, I feel that some of you uh, make sure that the rules you go by, they're really serving you from a higher perspective, okay? Just watch uh, how other people's speech, because there's the third house energy, so communication. Oh, I'm so happy some of you really needed this. Oh, okay, so again, hi, Lorena. Stomach meridian will help you create some space for your gut intuition, Okay, all right, next, because we got 12. <laughs> you guys, laughter is just really going to be necessary this week. Just try to bring it, like, just bring it on. <laughs> Hi, Rosa. If you have Regulus or Leo's energy in the fourth house, we have reconciliation. Remember the source of love. A loving action is all you need to begin the process. Reach out with a simple first step. Okay. Now, this is interesting because the fourth house is a house that I always, you know, connect. Yes, to the house, the home. Uh, but how do we feel with our own skin? And I don't know, like, I really feel it, you know, like with this embrace I really feel that some of you giving yourself, uh, you know, some TLC is very, um, very much needed. The organ that is connected to the fourth house, the cancer house, is the spleen. Now, you guys, the spleen is the only organ that is connected to all 33 vertebrae. Okay, and this is why cancer <laughs> is such a great manifester, but at the same time, so emotionally involved because everything is connected to this sign and also to this house. This is the only, this is like, if you have fourth house placement or whatever you have going on in the fourth house, no, this is, you, you signed up for really deep. <laughs> Okay, so I would say go and listen to the spleen. I have an album on my YouTube. You'll find it. You go on my little bio link. Okay, you just you will see a video playing. You just click. Okay, and you go into the playlist. It's called the Twelve Organs. So if you have Leo's energy or Regulus in um, the fourth house, what is saying here is that you want to give love to you first. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is like a very, very fun energy here. I'm just so happy. What was the fourth house again? That's okay. You just arrived. The spleen. And by the way, you guys, this is going to be reposted. This is going to be reposted. So you can... I should have told you. Like, like, like I show up. I show up. The, yes, the, the organ marriage, uh, the organ music is really, really good. So spleen. So if you have, again, Regulus in the fourth house, please listen to the spleen frequency. It's going to help you bring more love to yourself first, because if you want to manifest love in all aspects of your life, and when I mean love, it's not just relationship love, it's that everything that you do, you love. You love your job, you love your kids, you love your family, you love everything, okay? Everything is connected to the spleen, all your vertebrae. It's almost like it's the main organ that's going to either sing, or it's going to be, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so bringing more love for this portal if you have it in the fourth house. Hi, Christina. If you have Leo slash Regulus, especially Regulus, you guys, okay? You might have it or you might have Leo Regulus in two houses. Just know that it's okay. You can just stick around, listen, because ultimately that's going to be the whole wheel, the whole wheel of this portal, okay? Some of us, we just have to work on specific details, okay? 
Alright, specific details. If you have Regulus in the fifth house, ooh, mercy. Let compassion fill your world. Offer kindness, is the key word, to all living things. What you give, you also receive. This is so interesting because at the beginning, we talked about the tarot cards as far as the teachings of Regulus. And it's almost like when I told you, like, when you're going to feel dissatisfaction from the relationship or the behaviors of people surrounding you, even just strangers, you happen to be at the grocery store and you have like this thing going on that is triggering you. Try to take it and spin it and having compassion, you know, try to, uh, you know, I, I am grateful for witnessing for witnessing this interaction so I can bring or send them more love or hope they're going to have a better day. You know, that, that there's here, I'm not surprised because that bring like double Leo energy here uh, with the fifth house. If you have Regulus or Leo in the fifth house, this is very important to have compassion because Leo and this house is connected to the heart meridian. Yes. This is why the teachings, the higher teachings of Leo are about how you manifest your sovereignty, your self-mastery of the creation in this reality through your heart field. Not like there's a great coherence with your mind. It's because your mind is aligned with your heart. Okay. So if you have Leo or Regulus in the fifth house, remember to bring compassion this week. Oh, and especially I'm hearing compassion for yourself. That means, yes, you are human. Sometimes you will lose your temper, okay? And that's fine. Just just spin it, you know? For me, I, I know, especially some of you maybe in relationship, you've rehearsed this. Um, with my soul partner, <laughs> uh, when I used to lose my patience, he used to call me the snapping turtle. <laughs> So now when I lose my temper, I lose my temper and then I, oh, I'm sorry. I'm a, a snapping turtle. Just, just let me be for a second. <laughs> okay. So yes, yes, there's an organ. There is a meridian connected to each zodiac sign. So again, heart meridian, fifth house, Leo's energy. If you have Regulus in the sixth house, Change, 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 change. You are transforming. Let go of the past. Embrace the light and the joy of this new day. So I love this because the sixth house is connected to Virgo. And by the way, that's where I have it. So this is probably why <laughs> I'm feeling all goofy. <laughs> um, because the... Sixth house is connected to the small intestine and your small intestine brings passion and brings inspiration. Okay. So bring joy, bringing joy. And this is what it says here. You're transforming. You're letting go of the past. You're embracing your light. You're embracing the joy. If you have Leo or Regulus in your sixth house, joy is going to help you. And that means change what you witness switch it around. Well, that's what we're seeing a lot here so far with all the cards, okay? We're seeing, watch how the world around you can spiral you. Bring it humor. Make sure that you listen to your little inner voice and your gut feeling about certain situation. Make sure that you fill up your cup of love and that you bring compassion to what you witness outside of you. This will bring you more joy, okay? That's like the six first lessons by the way the sixth the first six house they're all working with your subconscious okay so all those cards this is working with your inner world what you kind of uh rehearse with yourself when we're going to switch to the seventh to the twelfth mm, a lot of other people are involved in okay so Let's move on to the seventh house. Okay, so seventh house, if you have, again, Regulus there, Leo. Let's see what we have. Pilgrimage. 
Ooh. Okay. So I feel already you are on a journey to your own greatness. Your soul is longing to find the way. Only you can choose your path. So what it's saying here, if you have Regulus in your seventh house, you're going to want... <laughs> Sorry, my, my higher self is funny. Take a hike. <laughs> and tell people off sometimes, okay? Because some of you... Uh, you know, you have to take the reflection of others as a mirror of the, so when it's in, feels in alignment and all is great, you're in alignment with a part of you. When it's showing you that it's not bringing you satisfaction, there's something inside of you that you want to review, okay? The organ that is connected to the seventh house, which is Libra, is the bladder. The bladder brings serenity. You know, when you can't hold it to pee, it brings like an anxiety. <laughs> have you ever tried to hold your pee in a car ride? Yes, we all have, right? Okay, so this type of energy, are you able to be patient? And that means that you're going to want to know also when to take some time off Maybe some of you, there's a group of people, okay? Maybe some of you, you need to take a hike from that, <laughs> that surrounding because there's probably other group of people awaiting that resonate. So there's a calling here, okay? If you have Regulus in the seventh house, you definitely are uh, inviting, invited in to review a little bit of your relationship and kind of see what you want to attract. And that means that once you figure out what you want to attract, you have to become that. I don't know. If I point the finger, there's some of you that have like a, a yard in this house. Some of you, I know it. You know, you, I'm, my tutorial is going to show you how to show, to show up the sacred geometry. If you have a quinquinx, a dotted green line with regulus, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> because when Audrey points the finger, <laughs> there is a yacht involved. There's a quincunx. Okay. Thank you so much, you guys. Oh, you're so welcome. All right. So again, bladder, some of you. If you have Regulus in the eighth house, the house of shadows, the house of quantum entanglement, the house of Scorpio, ooh, we get action. Stop hesitating. Movement creates the magic. Nothing can hold you back. The organ connected to the eighth house is the, <laughs> is the kidneys, okay? So the kidneys is giving you courage, determination. But that means that if you're off alignment, you're also going to feel fear. I have a pharmacy, okay, in my playlist. If some of you are feeling, and I don't know why I'm saying this, plagued, okay? I don't know if it's because Egyptian dragon just showed up. The plagues. <laughs> if some of you feel plagued by anger, frustration, anxiety, depression, fear, insecurity, I got you covered. I create this because I need this. We all need this. We're humans. We are processing a lot of those emotions, okay? So if you have regulus, Leo, in the eighth house, you need to just face your fears. This is the house of a shadow, okay? Go, go at it, okay? And the only way that I know how to support you is through frequency and also my lovely speech and smile. <laughs> okay. All right. If you have Regulus Leo on the, uh, in the ninth house, which is Sagittarius, ooh, I like it. Yes, I love the pharmacy too. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> uh, happiness. Happiness. Immense delight can be found in the smallest of things. Cultivate fluttering moments of joy. You know, what's interesting is that uh, Sagittarius is connected to the pericardium um, meridian. The pericardium is a muscle. It, it's it's, it's invo enveloping, sorry, the heart. 
and that means it helps the heart expand okay so as it helps the heart expand and if you think about it look at this we said the leo sign which is a fire sign is connected to the heart then you have sagittarius the muscle that helps expand even more and then we have every sign the first house connected to the lungs that help you create that breath it's amazing you guys if you follow this channel really this is the type of things that i do with astrology i make you understand that the zodiac is playing out in your life whether you realize it or not okay and it's it's activating you so you can manifest your destiny and you want to make it something great because that's you can spin any story into the greatest light and i feel this is this is something here for the ninth house okay it's going to give you more heart okay through this portal so you can spin any scars and turn them into stars some of you maybe you have to review your chiron wound okay i don't know for who that is it's in the smallest details it's almost like saying like if you have regulus or leo in the ninth house take what Every little crumb of joy that you have, whatever you can work with and, 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 and spin it around, you know? For me, when I have a, a hard time spinning my stories, I have to remind myself, hey, Audrey, <laughs> at some point, this girl was not walking. I could not stand more than five minutes on my both legs. So whenever I can stand, I'm not even talking dancing or walking or hiking you know sometimes i look at my legs i'm like oh my god they are working okay so some of you it might be something small it might be like you know i got 10 fingers and 10 toes and it might be something else i got all my teeth <laughs> okay just that's the teaching for if you have a Leo Regulus in the ninth house. Bring happiness to the small details. It's going to really support you to quantum leap. Because all portals, they're, they're opportunities for us to bring, to bring healing to the past, which affects the future, but also is all can be changed in the now. There's just so much that, yes, I woke up this morning. You know what? That's actually something that in some religions uh, I know we do. And I have to remind myself this is that there's some, some religions where you have prayers as soon as you open your eyes. You're not even getting up. Like you don't have to get ready for the prayer. You open your eyes. You're like praying. Oh, I am awake. I have this opportunity again. Thank you so very much. That was a great, that, that's the greatest example. That's the greatest habit. Okay, so if you have regular slash Leo um, energy in the 10th house. Ooh, did it? I thought, we, oh no, that's another. Kindness is coming back. Oh my God. You guys, do you remember the reel that I created for the new moon in Leo? Kindness is the new cool. Inner peace is your new success. Happiness you know, is, is, is where it's at, is your new rich. Yes, because we're entering a world, the five, five D expression of consciousness is all going to be vibrationally based. The higher you vibrate, the more things come to you with ease. Okay. So kindness here for the 10th house. Live with compassion. Open your heart to all life forms. Be an angel with hands. Mm, this is so, so amazing. Okay, that's really cool because the 10th house connected to, um, to Capricorn is connected to the triple warmer, aka the thyroid meridian. So very much connected to your voice. How you speak. How you speak about yourself, how you speak to others, how you speak in general, you know, how you speak is also how you have this inner dialogue with yourself, okay, is going to be just so, so precious, how you speak, and if, and if you have struggle with some of you, it could be just, you know, um, 
I don't know why and for who that is. If you have even a hard time to, and I'm not thinking about people having a hard time to give compliments. Some of you, maybe you think them, extend them, give them, give those compliments. But some of you, if you have a hard time receiving compliments, be able to acknowledge that when someone does this, they take, you know, that leap of faith to just like, extend to you something that they feel with their heart so you're offering them and offering yourself a place of kindness a place of love a place of appreciation and we need more of this okay and it's interesting because it's in the 10th house 10th house is also connected very much to our higher purpose but also our work environment where we can just you know our jobs so some of you you could practice at work Give words of kindness to your colleagues, to your environment, even your boss. I did this one time and I remember my, I don't even know if I can call my bosses ever like boss because they're just all, always become friends. <laughs> um, but someone I work with and I was like, you know, you're doing a great job. And for days, weeks, she keeps on like reminding me how amazing it felt. Okay. So some of you just... No, that could be something that even if you appreciate your boss, if you appreciate, you know, getting your paycheck and things like that, just say thank you. Maybe not even if you don't know them. Some of you are part of maybe bigger corporation. Just say thank you to the chain uh, that you're, you know, part of. Okay. Even if, if you, if that's not ultimately what you want and where you want to stay, just, just feed everything you're in with love it's an extension of you whether you like it or not okay if you start by loving it then everything will untie and untangle itself with more love and with more kindness okay oh i love it I'm t i feel so mushy now <laughs> thank you um if we have leo or regulus in the 11th house Flexibility, okay. Gently flow through the turbulence. Life has the ability to shape you, bend, but don't break, okay? So it's interesting because here we're working with the energy of Aquarius. Aquarius are always associated to the network of the neurons, the patterns of how we organize our thoughts and everything, okay? So Aquarius, is connected to the gallbladder. And the gallbladder gives you access to have inspired, decisive actions. So when you act, and here it's saying like, when you're bringing all this energy, remember like here we're channeling the whole wheel for this energy through regulus, through this portal, okay? We're seeing that we need to bring more joy, speak more compassion, be more kind, uh, you know, uh, maybe retreat slightly from a certain group, certain dynamics, face our fears, face uh, our dissatisfaction, kind of like, you know, step into a place of power. But that means also when you're doing all this, be flexible in the ways that it's going to show up for you. Because this energy is new. Ever. And this is why, you know, I put 8-8 portal 2024. This is like a, you know, like a wine. Uh, it's a new... Comment tu dis ça en anglais? Zut alors. It's a new year. How do you say that in wine? Like, you know, like it's, 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 it's a new taste. It's a new frequency. Yes, it's about our own sovereignty, our own manifestation, our own self-mastery our own alignment with our heart, our soul, our mind. But it's through the evolution of humanity. So be flexible. And to bring more flexibility, work with the gallbladder. Okay? Vintage! Merci! <laughs> I knew there was a word. I'm trying to find it in French now, and I don't have it. <laughs> By the way, that's my first language, so <laughs> I don't know. Cru, un cru. 2024, le cru 2024. Okay, so it's 
2024 vintage. Yes, thank you so much. All right, now let's move on to the last but not least, the 12th house. If you have regulus, and some of you, I think, uh, I'm, I saw some people having regulus or 12th house energy for Leo. Ooh, magnifique. <laughs> Metamorphosis. I love this. I love this. <laughs> Trust the process. And just laugh with me for a second. And be patient. Didn't we talk about patience right from the beginning? Mm -hmm. Oui. <laughs> Bonjour, Marie. Becoming cannot be rushed. Change is beautiful. Now I love this. So if you have this energy, you know, if you have it in the 12th house, and that's something that I, I coach with people that get readings or, you know, are part of the meditation temple when we have some conversations and sometimes we do and sometimes we don't, uh, it's, it's, we're all very busy, uh, but that's something that I express in the charts reading. When you have a struggle with one of, for example, if you have it in the 12th house, this energy, you're like, okay, great. I got to change. How do I do this? You have to walk the wheel reverse. Be more flexible with your thoughts. Be more kind with your words. Bring more happiness in every small detail. Face your fears. Retreat from groups that might not resonate. You see, and so on and so forth. Okay, and this is why I usually tell you guys, make sure you take some notes. If those messages, you know, resonate with you. Okay, I know that personally, the 8-8 portal used to be really intense for me. Even before I had any awareness of it. Okay, uh, and I know now, looking at, you know, the common theme of it, which is having your own sovereignty, energetically maintain your frequency, okay? I, I was drowning in other people's frequency. As an empath, and by the way, that's some of you, if you're new to the channel, that's the first album, sound healing album that I created last uh, beginning of 2023, my vintage of 2023, is the album called The Super Empath. I couldn't even organize my own thoughts. When I was going live, I had so many interactions <laughs> going on. I was like, wait a second, I can't even get to my point. And some of you, you might not realize, but that's how intensely you are connected vibrationally. And that's going to be something you might want to review. Okay, so some of you, we, that's what... That's something that I feel, okay? For this portal, look at the organ playlist. If you want to even just work with all the organ playlists, the way the playlist is organized builds up chi. So you can play it at night, let it play itself, okay? It's kind of like non and too invasive. It's more like white noise and a little bit of a bell, Boing. I like that. I, I, it just makes me feel like everything vibrates. Uh, but you can fall asleep to it very easily. And that can help you build more of your own life force. This is why I created this. But some of you, if your life force is all entangled in other people's, okay? Because that's very much what the portal of Regulus will show you. Work with my super empath. Yes, it's in my bio. So when you go in my bio, there's a link and you will see a YouTube video. Click on the YouTube video. It will bring you to my channel and go into the playlist. What's for the life force? The li work with the organs. Your meridians, you know, it's like this is how you bring more of that energy flowing through you. You need to release the, 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 the stories, there's organs in your body are just like instruments. That's what organs means, okay? They're instruments. So they play a certain melody. And that means that some of them, maybe they're even shut down. 
Some of you, you might even like have organs that are shut down. When I broke my hip, I literally could not feel any flow into my legs. No flow. I felt like I was just a torso. Okay. And what it created, I was insomniac since the first time I broke my hip. So when I was nine, I started becoming insomniac at nine years old because there was no chi. There was no chi. And I remember the first time I went to an acupuncturist and a healer, he put his feet on my, my hands on my feet and he didn't know anything about why I was coming to visit. And the first thing was like, you don't sleep. And I was like, oh my God, how do you know this? And I didn't even know I was not even sleeping because since I was nine, I barely slept. Okay. Now don't worry about me. I sleep like a baby. <laughs> okay. So the 12 organs, that's the playlist. You guys, if you have any more questions, I'm going to log off now and you can always DM me especially when it's connected to all this type of energy work. This is how I want to support you. This is how I want you to feel empowered, to receive your own guidance, to be able to let the stars guide you, okay? Those energies, they have a particular expression through you. Now, we all know <laughs> we are a work in progress in terms of Understanding how to flow with more ease. We've been so um, wired to believe that we have to fight, that we have to push, that we have to struggle, that we're, we're having a hard time just being present with what is so we can open up those gateways. Okay, so sound is a great healer. Yes, everyone, <laughs> stay in great health. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free. Some of you, if this all resonates, this is why I have my meditation temple. You can be totally new, beginner, have no clue about meditation, and you can still benefit from it. I have a lot of my meditation that are sound healing. I use tuning forks. I use my voice. There's a seven-day free trial for everyone. Even if you've already been in the temple, I repeat, even if you've already been in the temple, my offer stands. This is a great portal. This is my way to support you and to say thank you for all the ones that have supported me through all the last years, for all my life, even the ones that are not here to watch this. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.